Welcome back demo fans. So today we've got a really, really quick uh, quick win for you, which is just gonna be getting some forms data from a uh, simple HTML form, putting it through a logic app, turning it into JSON and dumping that off to Blob. So the power here is that you can just get individual pieces of data uh, that you may not have in any of your other systems, simple HTML form that pretty much anyone can write these days. Uh, you could use JavaScript in there as well. Just put a couple of fields on. So here I've got name and date and a submit button standard HTML. When you hit that submit button, the action on the HTML form is just the, the address of the logic app. That logic app will then uh, compose the JSON. You could put it into CSV format if you wanted to. And uh, then we're dumping that off to Blob in this instance. You could just as easily put this into SQL or you could put it into uh, Cosmos DB or something like that. So hope you enjoy. Uh, please hit the subscribe button down below if you like the video and hit the like obviously and uh, please put comments on, uh, suggest new demos, that kind of thing. So first things first, you're gonna to need to create an HTML file. Uh, you can also copy the file that we've got in the GitHub repository um, and just put this code in. It's a simple HTML form with, with uh, a couple of inputs. Uh, the inputs are up to you. Just make sure that you've got a, a name label on there so that we could later identify the fields and you'll obviously need a submit button uh, at the moment, we've got the action is blank in this one. Uh, so I've just put a placeholder of your logic app URL. You're going to need to replace that with the actual URL from your um, logic app once it's created. You only get that once you finish creating it though. So for the time being, it's blank. As you can see, the form is a very simple one. Once we load it up into the browser, uh, just a, a couple of inputs and a submit button. So first things first, log into your Azure subscription, and we're gonna create a new storage account. And when we create this, we're gonna also create the resource group to store the demo in. So we're not gonna do that as an extra step this time. So just click on create new and create the resource group. We'll call it forms demo. And give the storage account a unique name Quite often your surname and the current date works for this for demo purposes. And in production, we quite often use random numbers and things. Uh, so set the storage account to locally redundant just to save money on the demo. Again, in production, you might wanna use a, a different kind of storage. So once that's creating, we're gonna then create another resource in the same resource group. And the next resource will be the logic app. This is what's gonna capture the data for us. So we'll just give this a simple name and make sure that it sits in the same resource group as the storage account. And the location is not really important for this demo. It's um, really small amounts of data and it's latency is not going to be an issue so it doesn't matter where these things are again in production you might want to make sure that the storage account and the logic app live in the same region uh, although for the size of data it's probably not that that big of a deal so next once these things are created we're going to go into the storage account and create the containers and this storage account is going to be housing the html form so it's going to act as a web server in this instance uh, so we'll create a container called html form and set the access to blob. And that means that we can access that HTML publicly, uh, just like on a normal web server. And then we're gonna create the second container for the form data that's gonna come in from that uh, form. Set this one to private because we don't want that data publicly accessible. Uh, so then we go into the HTML form container and we're gonna just upload the HTML file. So you can just use the one um, from the repository for this, or you can download that or recreate it or use whatever form you want to. And once that's up, just click on the file and we're gonna copy the URL. And so this is the effectively your web address for the form. Um, you can embed this into other apps or you can you know, pretty much do what you want with it. Um, copy that and paste it into a new browser window and just make sure that the form is displaying, you've got the permissions correct. 
If you fill it in at this point though and click submit, it will just fail. Um, and it fails because it doesn't have a, a valid action in the, the HTML. So now we're gonna go into the logic app and we're gonna create the, the actual logic of this thing. So once that loads, you're gonna click on uh, create blank logic app down at the bottom there. And this gives you a nice blank canvas to start from. So in here, we're gonna do a search for uh, HTTP and it's the HTTP request trigger that we want. So when a HTTP request is received, and we're not gonna customize this at all. Uh, in this instance, we're just gonna leave it blank. And then um, we're gonna put a data compose on the form. So we will then copy the uh, content from the repository for this one from the instructions, um, just because it's, it's quicker for demo purposes. And, and this is after all a quick win. So we're gonna paste that in. And I'll just show you the how we get these trigger form data values in there in the first place. You're not expected to remember all of these things. So I'll delete that one. And then in the dynamic content window, if you click on expression and you start typing trigger and it will come up with all the options. So trigger form data value is the one we want. This gets the form data from that uh, trigger action, which is the HTTP request. And in there, we just put date in quotes, single quotes. And that's the label from the HTML form. Uh, so you can type whatever you want in there as long as there is an incoming parameter with the same name. Uh, so you can make the form bigger by just ad hoc adding other things. So now we're gonna put a blob storage action on for create blob. And basically the output of that compose is a JSON file. And we're just gonna dump that straight out into blob storage. So here we're creating the connection to, to our blob store selecting that form data 2019 I created earlier. And in here, we'll select the folder path of the form data. So this is where we want to dump those files. And then the blob name, again, I'm gonna copy from the instructions because it's long and complicated. But this blob name is basically reverse order date, uh, followed by last name and first name, which are the two uh, form values that we're, we're sending in. Uh, the date in this instance, I'm using the format date time and uh, UTC now. So it's getting the current date when this thing is triggered and uh, using that in reverse date format for the file name. This means that we can sort them by year and, and month, etc. Then in the blob content, we use the dynamic content just to put that output of the composed job in there. And we're going to save the app. So at this point, the app is ready to run. Uh, we go back into the trigger and we now have, this wasn't there before, we've now got the URL. Copy that and we're just gonna go back into the blob store. So what you can do here is edit the HTML locally, paste this into the action part of the form and upload it back into blob store. Um, normally you, would, you wouldn't upload the HTML first. Uh, in these, that was just because it's a demo, so quite often you would now write your HTML and upload it to use that form. Uh, but what we're going to do here is uh, just go back into that blob store and find the HTML file and we can just edit it directly in the Azure interface, which for our purposes here is a lot, lot easier. So we'll click on that form. Then we'll edit the blob and uh, once that comes up, it will show the contents of the file. You can see the Your Logic app URL piece in there. Just select that, paste in the URL, um, and click Save. That means that our HTML form will now submit into the Logic app, so we can then start submitting data. So in the test form, just hit Refresh so that you don't have the, the version of it from earlier. Type in a first name, type in a last name, select a date, uh, here we're going to go with today's date, 6th of February, click Submit, and that then goes off and submits. Uh, there's some things that you could do in production to tidy up that response. And uh, we're going to come back into the form data container that, that we created earlier, obviously it was empty when we created it. You'll now see that there's a file in there, so 2019.0206 blah 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 is the name with Lusty Dave at the end, uh, which is the name I typed in in surname, first name order, 
and if we now go to edit this blob we'll see the contents of that file which is just that generated um, uh, JSON that we had in the compose job and it's just taken those variables and and put them into structured file format uh, so now if we come back into the logic app we will see that the job has been triggered once and we'll have a success for that so click on the succeeded uh, run and we can then see the variables as they work their way through the logic app so this is quite handy for troubleshooting I, I went through this a few times when I was creating this demo um, just learning what was being submitted and where it was going so if we click on the HTTP request uh, we don't have a schema coming in on the input but if we click on the output this is the full uh, kind of body of the the request that comes from that HTML page so uh, we can see various things about the browser but here we can see those three parameters that we passed in under form data and then under compose we can see uh, that the output was the JSON that we've just seen in in the blob uh, the line breaks are, are slightly different in here but that's the only difference and then you can see all of the stuff that was written to the blog 